Hey everyone, what's going on? Are you having a good day? I sure hope you are. Especially now that you're watching this video, your day better get a lot better because we're gonna be continuing our discussion on processes inside of Linux. I think the video before the last video, we talked about control operators and how to run processes in the background. And we kind of introduced the idea of processes. But now I wanna talk a little bit more about how we can view these processes and control them. We'll start with a quick review showing that you can run something in the background by using the ampersand or the and sign. And when we hit enter, well, it looks like nothing happens. We just get this weird number going on here. What What is this? And then eventually we get an output, hello world. And that's just based off of the content of the script. So if we say less script or cat script, you can see echo hello world after it sleeps for 10 seconds. Well, you can get a visual of this by saying PS, and this is going to list your processes. So if we reissue that same command, dot slash script, and sign, and then say PS, we can see a few things going on. We have that sleep command running, another instance of bash, and of course PS, which is the command we're issuing right now. Now that it's done, when we say PS, we don't see those extra entries in our process list. So we saw this output in an earlier video, but we never really talked about it. So we have 75628. Well, this is the process ID. So when you get a list of all the processes, you can see what it's talking about, 75628. This is a new instance of bash. And then every new command we issue, such as sleep, it's its own process ID. When you're working with an operating system that has both the GUI and the terminal, sometimes you can choose how you want to launch your program. For example, we can go into our applications here and we can launch software such as GIMP for photo editing and we can run it that way. Or we could launch it from the terminal. And when we're doing this, we might want to put it in the background automatically. And that becomes pretty handy. And a benefit of this is we actually get some extra information we might not have got if we launched it using the GUI. Obviously, if there's any kind of errors or issues, such as failing to load a module, you can see that information here. And we should be able to go on continuing with our execution, and we can see that process using PS. Well, it's right here. We can also see this by typing jobs, and we can move GIMP from the background to the foreground using the FG command. So now we are back to the GIMP process. We can continue to see anything that shows up in the terminal here. I don't think GIMP is very terminal heavy. So, I mean, even when we're drawing and stuff, it doesn't show up anything. But if it were to show anything in the terminal, you could view it that way. Now, when we bring a process from the background to the foreground, we might run into an issue where we can no longer type in the terminal. You see, none of these commands are recognized and I can't seem to do anything. So what exactly is the solution to get a running process that's in the foreground back into the background? Well, generally to send stuff to the background, you would say BG. However, that's not working because it's currently running. So we need to actually pause the execution using control Z. And you can see it says stopped GIMP. GIMP is still open. It still exists, but we can't do anything on here. And it says it's not responding. We'll say wait, we'll go back to the terminal, and now we can send this to the background like so. Now we should be able to type whatever we want into the terminal. It works, and we should be able to go back to GIMP and start using it again. So that is how you take a currently running process that's in the foreground, pause it, and then relaunch it in the background. A similar thing works if you have that running process and you want to temporarily use the terminal and then bring it back to the foreground. Same thing, you would say control Z to pause it, issue whatever commands you want, and then you can bring it back to the foreground with FG. Now I wanna go through an example of what if you have multiple programs in the background and you want to decide which ones to bring to the foreground, it can get a little bit more complex. So let's launch a couple of programs and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to close out of GIMP with control C, which you can see closed it over here. We're back to our terminal. So we'll start with an instance of GIMP. I'll put that in the background, that'll launch. And let's launch something else, maybe VLC. And we'll put that in the background as well. That launches VLC player. Let's try one more application. We will say Firefox, and we will also launch that in the background. 
So there we go, we have that open. And now what I wanna do is I wanna take a look at our jobs. You can see we have three things running, GIMP, VLC, and Firefox. Firefox immediately said, done. I'm not really sure what that's about. Let's launch something else. We'll say calculator and launch that in the background. I actually think it's called GNOME calculator. Let's try that. Yeah, that's right, I just gotta spell it right. All right, there we go. That was way harder than it had to be. So now when we say jobs, we have GIMP, VLC, and GNOME calculator. To choose which of these processes we wanna work with, we use what's known as a job spec, which is pretty much a percent sign and a number that is associated with each of these jobs. So you can see we have one, two, and three. What I wanna do is I want to start with a clear screen and now I want to bring one of these into the foreground. So again, we have, let's say we wanted to bring VLC into the foreground. We would say FG percent sign and then the number that's in square brackets here, FG percent two, and this will bring VLC into the foreground. We'll put that back in the background, so control Z in background, and now we can see all of them in the background again. Let's try to bring that calculator into the foreground. Foreground percent three, and now we're on the calculator. So this is pretty much if you wanna see any of the terminal output for each one of these programs, you can bring it into the foreground and watch as it does stuff. Obviously that program will have to have stuff written to the terminal for it to show up. Not everything's just going to show up. You can see I can use this program without anything showing up in the terminal, but that's because it's primarily a GUI based program. Let's go ahead and we'll put that back into the background, clear the screen, and I wanted to go back to the PS command. You can see we have some extra stuff running here, but these are all things that have been executed from this terminal instance. This TTY refers to what terminal it was executed from, where this one is the terminal we are in, and you can see they're all the same. If you pass in an additional option x we will get all of the processes you might want to pipe this to less so that you can scroll through this list and then when you're done hit q if you want to know more about the ps command you can use the man pages or do some research online another command i wanted to show you real quick is the top command which is going to show the processes that are consuming the most resources so we just say top Every few seconds, this list will refresh and it gives a lot of additional information you might not see other places, such as the CPU percentage, the memory percentage, the user who owns this process. And in addition to all the information about each process, there's a lot of general information for everything, such as the time of day, it's 8.20 a.m., how long the computer's been online, in this case, five hours, we got one user on here, then we have the load average over the last minute, five minutes, and 15 minutes, which we might get into that more later, but not really the focus of this video. The number of processes, and then information on the CPU usage. This is for user processes, and then this is system processes. And then we have NI, which stands for nice, which are lower priority processes. Then we have idle, so the majority of the processor is idle right now. We have 0.8 waiting for I.O. And there's a few other things in here, which if you want to know all the details about this, you can just reference a document such as this one. But I just wanted to give you a, uh, an introduction, uh, an overview of this command and know that it's an option. You can probably find some information as well by saying man top and scrolling through here and finding whatever you need to find. So that's going to come in handy if you are regularly managing processes and want to know the state of the computer. So that gave you a little bit more practice working with the background and foreground and getting an overview of the processes on the computer. Hopefully this video was helpful. Stay tuned for the rest of this series. We're gonna to continue to learn more stuff. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.